let's keep, keep thinking of that as we move forward. And I will say I am really excited about this next speaker. Um, Jack Mollers has been doing amazing work around the world to enable folks to use Bitcoin and is one of the most prolific lightning founders that I think exists, right? We've also got Dez from Thunder. So we've got amazing founders in this room that, that you all should definitely speak to and learn from because they're the ones, you know, doing the work and understanding how this will impact millions and billions of people for the years to come. So really appreciate everything you all are doing and um, please welcome uh, Jack Mahlers with Strike. And I have a little confession. My favorite thing to do when it dips is to like go smash by on strike. So I love it too. Thank you. I appreciate it. So hopefully more folks dig in and welcome Jack. Thanks. All right, let me make sure this stuff works. Oop. There we go. Okay, okay. Awesome. Uh, hey, everyone. Hi. Um, the title of my keynote is Bitcoin and the Lightning Network, a public good for the American people and a strategic opportunity for us as a country. Uh, I, I'm a born American, I love my country, and I actually am not coming with a ton of advice today, actually. Uh, I more so want to propose a framework to where in which we can, as American citizens and collectively as a country, think about Bitcoin in a way that will help us evaluate what it means to America. So this is less advice, although I'm happy to give that later. Uh, this is more a framework that I think will be extremely helpful, and it's, it's an honor to be in our nation's capital and to be speaking with you all. So with that, um, just to quickly introduce myself, because that's polite, my name's Jack. Uh, many people know me as the founder and the CEO of a company called Strike that you just heard a little bit about. We are a leader in the Bitcoin and Lightning Network space, so I actively work on these technologies every single day. And more so than the company, I've spent the last 10 years of my life working on these technologies and really building a grounding, fundamental understanding of how they work and why they're important. For reference, I'm 29. So it's a third of my life, and a third of my life was learning to walk, and a third of my life was learning to shave. So I generally think of Bitcoin as my entire life uh, so far. Um, so first, I think it would be a good place to start and acknowledge what this room has heard about Bitcoin. Again, I'm not here to advise or talk down on anybody. I really think that there's just a better way to think about Bitcoin as a technology. So in the effort of not gaslighting, let's talk about some of these things that you may have heard that Bitcoin is poor technology, that actually, despite efforts from those heard, you've heard from earlier today, that it's really slow and it's really expensive and you heard that it sucks compared to other technology that you may have used or seen. You may have heard that it's only valued by criminals and that without a criminal, there's no one on this planet that could seemingly value this technology. You may have heard that it's a pyramid scheme and that its only value is to those that are passing the baton. You may have heard that it can't fit within proper regulation and proper compliance, which we use to construct a civilization we can function within. You may have heard that it's too volatile to be used in payments. So why would we work on this technology if I cannot use it to buy things at a Starbucks, for, for example? You may have heard that it's harmful to your neighbors and to your family members and to the general public retail investor, that this is a threat to them and that we need to make an effort to protect them from something that's threatening. And you may have heard that it boils oceans and that it is, all jokes aside, 
potentially dangerous to the environment, which we need to live and prosper as a species. I really wanted to put all of this on a screen at once, and again, just kind of peacefully converse about whether you believe some of these things, none of these things, all of these things. My point is that collectively, this is not a great way to evaluate a new technology. These are one-off, almost ad hominem attacks on a thing. Now, whether they end up being true or end up being false, we'll talk about it. But as a framework of reference for us as a country and for us as Americans, to think about a new thing, which we as a nation have been incredible at, from the printing press to the automobile to the internet, I think that we as a nation need a proper framework to evaluate and have good conversation. So I'm going to cross it out. Um, here's what I think is really important on the back of Senator Cruz, which was awesome, by the way. Um, I think Bitcoin is a technology, and we can start there. There's no one I know of to dispute that. I think that Bitcoin is a superior technology and achieved technical feats that were previously impossible. I think, like the internet before it, Bitcoin is built for a world that's in an active transition from central and local to decentral and global. And I think it's a really important framework that we all start to think of Bitcoin as a public utility. It's digital public infrastructure for money, very much like the internet is digital public infrastructure for information. Superior tech that is collectively in a broad stroke transition for our species and it is owned by no one and accessible by everyone. So it is a public good that acts as infrastructure for civilization to utilize if they so please. And my reference is the internet. I think it is a much healthier way to think about this tech. Because as a monetary asset, Bitcoin has established itself as the undisputed digital reserve leader. There's no doubt about that. And with the Lightning Network, which is technology that, simply put, makes Bitcoin a lot faster and a lot cheaper, enables internet-native payments at a global scale. So I'm going to redo the slide previously with all of the claims and borderline attacks on this new technology. I'm going to add the Lightning Network, which is critical to Bitcoin's success. And I'm going to propose that it's actually better technology, that Bitcoin can do everything in the financial space far faster and far cheaper. Those are just qualities of better tech. The internet can do things that newspapers can't, far faster, far cheaper. It's globally interoperable. There are no walled gardens in this system. It's accessible by, accessible by everyone. There's nobody left behind. It's resilient. There's no central point of failure. There's no big bank on Wall Street, or there's no big tech in San Francisco, or there's no communist regime somewhere outside of this country that can deem this public utility, this public infrastructure for the world to fail. It eliminates intermediaries, which many people see as a threat to existing corporations. It's not the way to think about it. Uh, removing intermediaries is very empowering to the individual. It transfers value, not personal information. Monetary movement requires a sense of credit, which requires a sense of personal information being passed to conduct a transaction. Bitcoin solves this by actually making the value digital and bearer. So if we exchange value and not information, we do things like eliminate fraud and greatly secure data integrity and security. These are awesome things. And lastly, very importantly, when we think of things like the Dodd-Frank Act and the Durban Amendment, it eliminates oligopolistic distortions. It opens Competition, innovation, you know, the true Durban Amendment is a free market. And it removes concentration of corporate interest. All of these qualities, by the way, guys, um, are one of the internet. So I really urge you to not take my words as advice, more as a framework and reference on how to think about the technology. It's technology, and it's a public good that's owned by nobody. 
and its infrastructure for money, similar to how the internet is infrastructure for information. So I have a few sections that I'm going to build on top of, which will lead us to what I believe is a conclusion that Bitcoin can be very helpful and necessary for American values and ideals. So let's walk through the reality of modern payments. Uh, Technological constraints, closed payment standards, rules defined within boardrooms, which is not a bad thing. It's a free market thing, and it happened, but it's been happening for over 50 years now. I really like this slide, the visuals. It looks a little dorky. This is like, welcome to my art fair project. I kind of just toppled a bunch of uh, visuals here, but you see things like the Department of Justice being upset with a corporation like Visa, you th see things like SWIFT, which was invented long before my, I think my father was even born. Um, you see an amendment from our government trying to help the individual and help the small business. Um, you see a diagram of how payments work, which no, none of us will ever actually grow to understand how they work today. And it's really quite insane, the level of financial abstraction that we live in today. Um, this is a slide from Business Insider on uh, like trying to encapsulate payments. Uh, the font is so small, none of you are gonna be able to even read the corporations that are on that screen. There's just far too many. And even if we take an abstracted layer above that and we say, well, let's do away with the free market and corporate interest for now, what about governments? What about nation states that issue currency? How do they settle payments? This is a hilarious diagram that's color-coded because it's so complicated. The red is real-time payments that are launched and live today and used by our species. The gray are people that have been working on it for quite some time. And the black are people that are still having whiskey and talking deeply about whether it's a good idea. And it just goes to show the level of fragmentation, the lack of interoperability, and how as money, as a public good, uh, we're very much not on the same page. Whereas with the internet, this entire globe would be all the same color. That's not to say in gaslight Americans as if we haven't been a very material part of technological advancement. So this slide is an immense compliment to this country and who we breed and who we support and who we are. I mean, we invented the iPhone and Google and the cloud and ways to connect on the internet that was previously impossible. So this is an important idea that this is not because of a lack of technological advancement. But if you try and understand where technological advancement has been represented within finance, I like to describe it as improvements to the front end. My mobile banking app on my phone, I'm a big Jack Dorsey fan, big Cash App guy. Cash App knows my birthday, like, hey, happy birthday. Thanks for direct depositing to us, and gosh, you seem to love lattes with whole milk. It is such good software on the front end. All of these things are. Apple Pay is very useful. Shopify is amazing. I can be scrolling a social network like Instagram and then tap on something I see in a friend's photo of mine and purchase it on the spot while watching television. It's amazing. But technological advancement in payments may look like they're getting slicker, but under the hood, nothing has changed. Because you know something that Jack Dorsey and Cash App can't offer me is an instant payment across the world. It's a hugely important concept, is at the settlement layer, nothing's changed. At the base infrastructure layer, we've been relatively stuck. And the surface good, infrastructure bad. Oh, sorry, I'm clicking. This is the slide to illustrate infrastructure bad. Surface good. Cash App is an amazing experience that sits on an amazing phone, that runs on an amazing chip, all produced within the United States of America, but the infrastructure is uh, laughably frustrating. So modern payments, they're not interoperable. They're always intermediated. They require, because of their reliance on credit and the financial abstraction from the actual asset, they require intermediation. They are delayed in their settlement because the asset isn't actually digital and bearer. There is no such thing as instant settlement. They're plagued by risk and fraud and data security issues. 
and they're generally owned and operated by oligopolies. So our financial infrastructure that we use as a country uh, is not within a free market, which is a dangerous concept. So technology changes everything. This is a super important idea. It's something that this country and the American people are very familiar with, and is how I think we should be thinking about Bitcoin as a government and as the people. Um, Bitcoin is a global decentralized payment network. Um, it's a very important concept. These are buzzwords and stuff, and I really try to avoid this type of language, especially in this audience. Um, the idea is it's accessible to the entire world, it's decentralized, and then it's owned by no one, accessible to everyone. Um, and, and really, if you get lost in any of this stuff, fall back to the internet. You could replace Bitcoin and the internet in pretty much every one of my slides, and they will be spot on correct. The Lightning Network, which is a technology maybe not everyone has defined yet, it's simply technology that allows Bitcoin to scale. And so combined, you get a global robust settlement infrastructure for the world that's a public good, a public utility, and you get scalable infrastructure that can conduct superior payment experiences, superior meaning when we measure things like speed and cost. For money, Bitcoin as a technology it's digital and bearer, which means it eliminates abstraction. This is a super important, important point. If you think, open your phone on whatever financial app you use and think of the level of ab abstraction. How many hops would you have to get to to arrive at the actual US dollar sitting at the Federal Reserve? I'd have to go, if I opened my Cash App, I'd have to go from Cash App and Square and Jack to then Visa to then the issuing bank to then the bank that has access to the Fed window. But even before that, there's a difference between a card issuer and a bank issuer. I'd probably have to go about 10 steps to get to the actual financial instrument that is the United States dollar. Bitcoin abstracts that entirely because it is bearer in a digital form. So the digital representation of Bitcoin, everyone in this room, if they've used Bitcoin, they've physically touched it. I'm 29 years old, I was born in Chicago, Illinois, I've never physically touched a dollar because no one's ever let me inside of the Federal Reserve. This is a super important point. And then for payments, Lightning eliminates closed ecosystems and inter intermediaries. So I actually took a screenshot of Jack's app, the Cash app, and this is his implementation of Bitcoin. So inside of Jack's app, I'm actually touching Bitcoin. And it doesn't require Visa or an issuing bank. There are no intermediaries for me to use Bitcoin through Jack Dorsey's application. Um, if we go back, all of these things are generally required for me, though, to use American payments. I just had an ice latte. So for money, for money, Bitcoin as a digital bear instrument eliminates abstraction. And for payments, Lightning eliminates closed ecosystems and intermediaries. So if we go through payments, these new payments, this is superior technology. It is not trying to hurt the environment. It is not trying to elicit criminal activity. It's interoperable. It's permissionless. So it doesn't require trust. It could be done by everyone. It's very inclusive financially. It settles instantly and in a cash final manner where the message is the money and the money is inside of the message. If the money is now bytes of data, I could text you that and it physically settles without having to be cleared through 17 financial institutions. It transfers value, not personal information. Super important for fraud and data privacy and security risks. And it's owned by nobody and operated by everybody. So the Department of Justice should not have long nights trying to put a case against any corporation. Money is technology. Bitcoin is superior technology. This is the correct framework, I believe, as an American to think about this stuff. Um, so I've talked about Jack and Cash App because I really try to make this presentation a framework of reference, not about myself, not about my company. I unfortunately don't have internal access to Jack's data. Um, I know the guy, he's an amazing dude, but not that well. Um, this is data of my own, from my own business. So we offer a service that allows Americans to send US dollars to the Philippines received as local currency. So again, 
I'm not requiring my customers to touch Bitcoin, use Bitcoin. I'm using Bitcoin as public digital infrastructure for monetary movement, where we take dollars from a customer, we send Bitcoin to the Philippines, the Bitcoin is then exchanged into local currency and deposited into a customer's bank. Uh, take a look at this slide. From the user opening the application to the Filipino peso landing in the recipient's bank account, um, on average, it's about one minute to physically settle. Um, I just put together a few other references. Um, it's not even close. <laughs> superior tech, again, superior tech. Uh, on a cost basis, um, so this is our internal data. This is not what we charge or how we monetize as a business. This is just the internal data of our lightning infrastructure settling this money. Um, it's all less than 10 basis points every time, not even close. Um, so as a business, my revenue opportunity and my margins are phenomenal. And as a business, I have an opportunity to pass a lot of this value back to the consumer. The disintermediation is realized in the cost. And the American citizen benefits from this. My customers, more money makes it home. And I thought this part was particularly interesting is if we look at our internal data as a business, over 95% of customers are actually using this technology to settle payments in foreign bank accounts and in foreign mobile money accounts. Less than 5% is using it to pay other Bitcoin and Lightning apps. So again, this is not front-end technology. This I did not build the cooler, slicker cash app. This is public settlement infrastructure that the world is using under the hood to improve what hasn't been improved since probably 1970. Super big difference between the cooler, slicker Venmo and a public utility that acts as infrastructure for money, similar to how public utility in the internet is for information. And the advantages are clear as day. They're very obvious. I think Bitcoin is a public good for Americans. So superior tech that's a public good that's owned by no corporation is good for the American citizen. Secure, decentralized, scalable infrastructure provides a number of benefits. This, these technologies traditionally give everyone access that's traditionally excluded otherwise. It's very resilient. It can't go down, quote unquote. And competition, it opens up competition, which then results in innovation, which then results in price suppression, which then results in more value to businesses and to individuals. Now, I keep going internet and Bitcoin, internet and Bitcoin. I actually put this slide together and I'm gonna impend messages there because I tricked you. This is a slide about the internet. Take a second and read it. Secure, decentralized, scalable public infrastructure. A good thing for our country and a good thing for the American individual. Everyone can now have access to send and receive messages and conduct information transfer, right? There's no central points of failure. And it's open competition. Anyone can build a website and solicit me as a customer. Now I'm going to change the message to payments and convey a very similar idea, that this is a public utility. And it's just within the financial sphere as opposed to the information sphere. Bitcoin is digital public infrastructure for money, much like the internet is digital public infrastructure for information. See this guy taking a picture. Let you take that. You got it? <laughs> that boy. Bitcoin, along with the internet, embodies American values. Individual freedom. There's a freedom in coming, going, expressing, and opining on this network. Equal opportunity. On the Bitcoin network and on the internet, you treat others without discrimination. It's a free market system. It's driven strictly by supply and demand with no outside interference. And it's driven by innovation and progress. Open competition, natural innovation, fast progress. Without innovation, there's no progress. Without progress, there's no innovation. These open public infrastructures that are digital, which we're living through this age now, are very necessary for us as a country. Now lastly, I, I'm looking at the clock. I know I'm running up on time. I, I'll blitz through this, I promise. Don't kick me off. A uh, strategic opportunity for us as a nation. So I think modern day payments struggle a lot, unfortunately. We've seen how superior technology changes everything. We've seen how this superior technology 
actually benefits the American individual. And now I think we need to very, very seriously talk about the strategic opportunities for us as a nation and the security risks, quite frankly. If you're going to sit here and tell me that the internet is not core to our nation's security risks, I'm gonna move. <laughs> um, so, you may have heard that Bitcoin is not crypto. Hopefully my presentation made this a little bit more clear. Again, I think a really good framework for reference is that Bitcoin acts as public infrastructure, not a corporation. So there's no development team that you're waiting on a feature. You know, there's no fundraising marketing team that would make the coin go higher. It acts as a public utility. It's digital infrastructure. So it is not crypto. It can help stabilize our energy grid. It can offset excess energy. It can incentivize energy use that is very difficult otherwise. It can help facilitate industrial development. Oop, sorry, I'm losing track between the <laughs> laptop and the screen. Oh. Okay, sorry, you, are we good? Can somebody give me a thumbs up? Yep. It can provide, I think no one talks about this enough, a new source of national wealth for America. Um, national wealth is categorized as produced capital, human capital, reserve assets. Think about the source of wealth that the internet provided this country. The iPhone was created here, Facebook was created here, Twitter was created here. I think it's very important that people that own Bitcoin, a lot of it, and people that build on top of Bitcoin very well pay taxes in, where's Cruz, Texas, and not Dubai. I'm being very serious. And it strengthens geopolitical influence. Um, these are important points. So you may have heard a lot of this. Hopefully my presentation helps give you a reference on how to think about this more deeply. What I want to leave this room with is the payments aspect. What I think the US government needs to very, very seriously consider is both how Bitcoin's power can be harnessed and leveraged as a digital public utility, similar to the internet, for national security interests. Um, this technology can't be uncreated. China and Russia will be using this in one to five to 10 to 100 years, whether we like it or not. And that's OK. But we need to think about it, and we need to think about it correctly and responsibly. And then I think we need to think about how the payments technology can fix material distortions in our country. Um, and again, I could be wrong. I'm not giving advice. I'm clearly very biased and passionate. But just as an exercise as Americans, um, this is our duty to not only our country, but to the free world. You know, for payments, Bitcoin is already catalyzing optimization. I talked a little bit about my business. We all know Jack and Square are very big proponents. We all know former big tech executives like David Marcus are now in the industry. This technology is being validated and changing lives already. Uh, and I think with time, will change everyone's life. Uh, and by the way, including the way fiat currency moves. So again, I can explain this later. It wasn't worth this presentation, but my company, for example, amongst many others, moves US dollars on top of this. So this is not anti-dollar. This is not opposing the Federal Reserve. This is superior technology. It's a public utility that can be used for whatever someone wants to use it for, just like the internet. The United States has to harness this tech, or at the very least, give it an honest look. <laughs> um, can't reject it, because um, the genie's out of the bottle, and it's not coming back in. So my last slide, as the leader of the free world, the United States is in the best position to demonstrate commitment to exploring this new, new idea. Um, it's who we are as a country, and again, we don't owe it to our neighbors, but we owe it to the free world at large. Um, we are the world leader in democracy and for human freedom. And this is a new public utility for money, just like the internet is for information. And as a country, um, we need to be leaders. And I feel as if we've struggled with that at times, and it's OK. This stuff is new. But with this framework of thought, I think we can make a lot of progress because we're the best country in the world. So if you need to reach me, this is my email. Um, and I appreciate you guys giving me the time. <laughs>